It's time to talk about the Royals uh, and a warm welcome to Royal commentator Sarah Robertson. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Kevin. Uh, first of all, Tuesday's a kind of a D-Day for Prince Harry. Uh, that's when the Heritage Foundation, a kind of conservative American think tank, are taking uh, effectively Prince Harry to court because they say uh, they want to see his visa application to see whether he was honest about his drug abuse his use of drugs, which, of course, he wrote about in excruciating detail in his spiteful little memoir, Sp Spare. Uh, now, if he didn't... If he said he didn't take drugs uh, on his visa form, uh, he could be in some trouble, uh, because they will say, the Heritage Foundation, well, you, you, you lied. We don't allow drug takers to stay in this country. You can go you'll have to leave. I mean, it is quite a serious situation. It, hi, Kevin. Yes, it is It is a serious situation. This is why they're suing Joe Biden's administration to get them to overturn Harry's visa application. Whether they're successful in that, I don't really think they will be. The thing is, even if they overturn it, and if Harry has, has lied, which they suspect that he has in order to get into America, the, what I want to point out is an admission of drug use does not ban you for life for entering America. It can be down to the consulate's discretion, whereby they can issue a, a, a waiver form to allow you to come in. Now, I can't imagine that Prince Harry actually filled in his own visa application. It would have been a lawyer probably acting for his wife, Meghan Markle, that would have done all of that side of things. And when it came to that box, I imagine they just left a great big blank space. But even if it comes out now, as we know, that he admitted to taking cocaine and, and magic mushrooms and cannabis, among, among other things, in, in spare, that doesn't mean that the American authorities will just turn around and say, right, you've got to, you've got to leave the country now. Uh, you know, he's, this would be a diplomatic incident. At the end of the day, Harry is still the King of England's son. He's his second born, and with that, he does get rights, and it would cause a diplomatic incident if the American authorities were then to say, right, we're booting you out of the country. They're just not going to do that. They're not going to fall out with Britain over... Well, yeah, but the, the, the one thing is, though, Sarah, the thing, he's thing, he's thing is, Sarah, thing is, uh, if I filled in a visa application form, or you did, so I want to live in the United States of America, and by the way, my hobby is snorting coke, smoking dope, and uh, whacking down a load of uh, magic mushrooms, that's my hobby, we wouldn't get in. So the thing is, what is awkward about this, I know this, I've lived there, Americans do not like the idea of privilege. They hate the idea of anyone, even if they're a member of the British royal family, getting special treatment. So the problem here for Harry is the Heritage Foundation will argue you are giving this guy special treatment that other people would not get. That could prove a problem. Oh, most certainly. They will, they will be up in arms. That's why they're following through with this and taking this expensive lawsuit because they want to get a result they do feel that he's been given special privileges because he's the king of king of britain's son a king of united kingdom's son so so they do already see it in that way that's why they're pursuing this through through the court whether they're successful i i, I doubt it will be overturned i think they'll lose their case and a judge will throw it out because someone high up in our government will have a word with the american government and all get all get smoothed over. But it is very interesting. Other celebrities weren't allowed into the country. You're quite right. Nigella Lawson was banned from flying into America in 2014 after she admitted to taking drugs. Pete Doherty uh, from the pop band, a, a well-known drug taker, he wasn't allowed into the country. Neither was Amy Winehouse, the late, great Amy Winehouse. She couldn't even go to collect her Grammy because she admitted she was honest in her application. And it was obviously well documented in the press about drugs. So has Prince Harry had special favours? Yes, he probably has, because he's Prince Harry his whole life. From, from his birthright, from being born, has been one great big special favour that he's throwing back in his father's face and in, and in the British people's face. So should he pay some sort of consequence to that? I don't know. I mean, he's it would, as I say, cause, cause a bit of a rift, cause a bit of an incident. We want to keep smooth, harmonious relations between the United States and Britain. 
it's just more embarrassing for Harry, really. That's the thing, and it looks a bit embarrassing for us, for, for the King of England's son to be sort of put into this compromised position. That's really what it comes down to. But I think it will all be glossed over and smoothed away. What it will do, though, Kevin, which points back to corroborates what you were saying, is it just means his image, his image yeah. in America, yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah. becoming right. more tarnished. It's becoming more tarnished because, as you pointed out, Americans won't like that. He's got this elite position. They'll be saying, who's this man? So what? He's the son of the King of England. What's that to me? We live in the Republic, United States of America. We've got nothing to do with them. Why is he being given special privileges? So it's damaging to his image again. He's brought more damage and more harm into his image. If he'd kept quiet about all of the drugs claims in the books, we would know nothing about it, and, and that would have been it. But he had to go and open his mouth. Obviously, wanted to get the money from the publisher, so that's why he did this huge tell-all. But it has come back to bite him on the bum again, and it's damaging his image, the brand, the Sussex brand, once again in America. And he's losing more favour with the royal fans that he had over there. They will be starting to get annoyed because they think, well, why is he being given this special dispensation? Yeah, they won't why like... is he getting that They won't like special it. They treatment? will not like when that. I'm but, not, or my but, son is it, or daughter. But I think I think that uh, Harry uh, is probably realising it probably wasn't his wisest move to reveal all about his narcotic habits uh, because that's come back to bite him. But uh, we'll see what happens on Tuesday. That court case unfolds in Washington. Uh, let's talk about, uh, shall we say, a more wide overarching issue. More and more reports, it's worth discussing, come on, let's do it, that Harry and Meghan may be splitting up that they haven't been seen together very much. Yes. We, heard, we heard reports, was it last week, that Harry has a special place that he goes to to get away from Meghan. He even uses hotel rooms sometimes to be on his own. So more and more talk that all is not sweetness at light and light behind the uh, closed doors of the Montecito mansion. What do you reckon? Absolutely, Kevin. Well, I think all men like to have a bit of a boat hole from nagging wives, so... I suppose so. <laughs> Harry's no exception, and I imagine Meghan's quite the harpy. <laughs> you know, they either go to the golf you course... You said that, not me. Well, he can't really do that. <laughs> you know, he can't, he can't really do that. I mean, I think he goes to the polo field sometimes and takes out his anger on the polo pitch. Um, but, yeah, he, he has this special bolt hole that he goes to when Meghan's being a harpy, and I'm getting at him, and he goes away to escape for the night and, and does boys' things, and that's probably where he enjoys a pint or two. Um, and just all the things that her clean, her clean living, her clean Californian living uh, that she won't tolerate um, in, in the house, so to speak. So, yes, that's where he gets away. But they've been leading increasingly separate lives, really, since January, when we saw the backlash to the book. Megan's sort of been strategically distancing herself from her husband in public. We've not really seen them very much together. He came across to his father's coronation on his own. He's been making solo trips to the UK without her. They obviously had that incident together at New York a few weeks ago, which was another backlash where they over-dramatised this supposed car chase from the paparazzi. That splattered back on their faces and it made did, them look it? stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes, and so Megan's trying really to sort of distance herself from her husband's image in public. She's striving out on her own. And they're following increasingly separate paths career-wise. Harry's going to be spending four months of, of the uh, sorting out the Invictus Games in, in Germany. And Megan signed up with another big Hollywood talent agency, who I think as well have been advising her from behind the scenes to say, look, this is not a good look for you. This is not a good image to be constantly attacking the royal family, constantly criticising and harping on. If you want to be a serious humanitarian, politician which is the way she's going is towards american politics you've really got to start keeping a stiff upper lip and remaining more private behind the scenes not all this coming on chat shows and talking uh, as they have been like two d-list uh, reality celebrities so megan's now started to sort of separate herself we've been told with netflix that's been reported that they're going to be from behind the scenes they're not going to be talking as much, really, because I think they've also run out of ammunition and things to say. He gets no information now from his brother. 
and what and from his father and what's going on with the royal family. He's lost a lot of favour with old friends and the circles he's used to move to used to move in. So Megan's not really getting the information that she was getting before, whereby they could use that and monetize it. They're really being half they have been cut adrift in that respect. That's damaging for her. She knows that her long term success really hangs on keeping that Duchess title. She's probably seen how the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, learned to rein it in. Sarah became a big star in the US. She made a lot of money doing Weight Watchers, various things. But what Sarah Ferguson always did was praise the Queen at all times, and she never, ever criticised the monarchy. Okay. So uh, Megan's probably taken a step yeah. and stop and thought, oh, I can learn from the Duchess of York and continue in that vein. But yes, there's definitely a separation there going on, and I really don't give the marriage much longer than another few years. It's it's now sort of coming to an end, no, I think, I now, because what has Harry got to offer Megan? She's probably bored with him. She wants excitement, power, private jets, billionaires, fabulous, lavish functions, the White House. Really, what can he talk to her possibly uh, about? I'll tell you what, what he had, the pulling power. Well, if that, it's gone now. So what has he got to offer her, Kevin? Well, if that marriage uh, ends, uh, that'll make a few headlines. Uh, and so much for their pledge to stay out of the media. Uh, if they split up, they'll be all over the front pages, more than Philip Schofield, I imagine. Uh, Sarah, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Sarah Robertson, their royal commentator. Uh,